Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Budgeting Biologist. My name is Brittany. If you're new here, thank you for stopping on this little old video. If you're oldie but a goodie, thank you as always for coming back. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over my finances for quarter one of 2024. So if you're interested in that type of content, please consider liking, commenting, and of course, subscribing to the channel. Your girl would appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and hop into this video. So hi, hello. I hope you are doing well and staying safe no matter whenever or wherever you may be watching this video. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Brittany. I am a zero-based budgeter in the Washington DC area and this is my channel where I've been sharing my financial journey so I can continue to work towards and maintain financial independence. So this is a brand new type of video I have never done on my channel, but I was inspired by some fellow budgeters that I've seen recently um, do this kind of quarter one review, which is from January, February, and March of the beginning of 2024. And I'm gonna be going over my finances, how much I made, what I spent, how much I put into savings, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really good time of the year to do this. I'm shocked I've never done this before, but to really take inventory of where my money has really been going um, over the last three months, um, because I have a feeling that I'm gonna have spent a lot more money in certain categories than I had hoped. Um, and this is, you know, a way for me to look look at some ways that I can, you know, do better in the next quarter of the year. So anyways, let's go ahead and hop straight into it. So starting off with income, wait, let me make sure y'all can see that. Okay, right, so starting off with income, um, in quarter one of uh, 2024, I had two jobs, my main job, and then um, I teach at a local community college, and I'm a salaried employee at both of those jobs. So for my main job in total, this is after um, deductions, 401k, um, I don't actually pay my health insurance premium. My company pays my entire premium for me. So super blessed for that. But yeah, definitely 401k deductions, all that good stuff. In total, um, for the first quarter of the year, I get paid $14,519.28. And when I look at it that way, that is just so much more money than what it actually feels like I get paid. So super, super, super blessed for that. And then at my uh, teaching side job, so far I've gotten paid $648.52. I didn't have any extra income this month. So that would be like if I got, you know, any sort of extra income from basically anything. I didn't really get any the first quarter of the year. Um, so that's zero. But in total for the first quarter of 2024, I got paid in total $15,167.80. Okay y'all, so moving on to savings and investing. So if you watched one of my early videos this year where I talked about my financial goals of 2024, one of the things that I wanted to do was put more money towards investing um, and not including like my Roth IRA, which we'll talk about, but that was my primary goal of 2024 was to put much more money into investing and let's see how I did. So in my personal savings account, I put $3,100 into my personal savings. That's my two to three months, not two to three months, three to six month expenses, emergency fund, general savings. I have a high yield Capital One savings account. So that went into that account. I put $583 every month towards my Roth IRA to max it out. So, so far this year, I put $1,749 in my Roth IRA. Now, here's what I am a little bit disappointed with. I've only put $450 towards investing, um, which is more than what I did this time last year when I looked back at my 2023 budget, but not nearly as much as what I was hoping for. So this is something I plan on increasing in the rest of the year. Um, so, you know, I'll reevaluate how I do in quarter two, but yeah, I'm a little disappointed in this and I definitely want to increase the amount of money that I'm putting towards savings and investing. And if I just grab my little calculator here, in total, I put $5,299 for saving and investing. So if I do 5,299 divided by 
1,500, sorry, 15,167.80. So we can just get a quick percentage. That means I put about 35% of my money total towards um, savings and investing. So now let's move on to what I have spent so far on my fixed expenses. And a few of these, I do share the expense with my fiance. That's gonna be the mortgage, water, electric, and um, files, which is for our internet. So this is just reflective of what my portion was. So in total for the mortgage um, for quarter one, I put $4,584.66 towards my mortgage, $150 towards our water bill, um, I put $49.26, I pay our Netflix subscription, so about $50 for that. Electric was $139 um, in total for quarter one. And I just wanna make sure I explain it, why my electric is so low. We do what's known as budget billing, where our electric company basically splits our you know, bill over kind of equal payments throughout the year. And of course, we just moved into this house um, exactly a year ago at this point. And so of course the house wasn't, you know, using any electricity, but that would still um, account for in the budget billing. So I do expect our bill to go up now that we're in entering quarter two and we've been in the house for a full year. So I do expect our electric to be going up, but what I spent so far is $139. We did 165.44 towards um, BIOS the internet, and then my cell phone bill was 113 dollars and 10 cents total for quarter one. And then what I spent on Apple is 22 dollars and two cents, which is my iCloud storage and my Apple Music Student. So in total, I have spent 5,223 dollars and 48 cents on my fixed expenses. And then of course, if I go over here, we look at that percentage wise. <laughs> so obviously the biggest, you know, proportion of my money went towards our mortgage, you know, over 87% there. And then the rest of my bills took up a much smaller proportion. So like 12% basically for all the rest of my bills. But if we look at it in total of what I spent versus my income. So again, we have 5,223, 48, divided by my total income of 15,160. Whoops, that got all messed up. So let's start over. So we need 5,223.48 divided by 15,167.80 means about 35, 34% of my money went towards fixed expenses. Um, not too, too bad. Um, I am aware my mortgage is hella high. We live in a very high cost of living area. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we gonna get them rate cuts anytime soon so we can refine it. But I'm super grateful that, you know, we make enough money where we can afford um, our bills relatively comfortably. So, you know, I'm always just gonna be super <laughs> grateful for that. So now moving on to my discretionary expenses. Um, and these are the ones where, you know, I'm gonna try to have the most change in um, coming in to quarter two of 2024. So let's start off with groceries and total for groceries. Again, this is what I spent for my portion. I split this cost with my partner. Um, for quarter one, we spent $712.61 on groceries. January was the highest month that we spent on groceries. We had just gotten back from Barbados, so we basically had no food and we went over on groceries in January. But February, March, we stayed in under budget, basically the same amount. So happy about that. But $712.61 for groceries. Gas has pretty, you know, pretty much remained stable. Um, I did 83 in January, 93 in February, and 95 in March. Gas prices have been going up a little bit, so you can see that reflected here. But in total, I spent $271.44 on gas. Beauty, in total for quarter one, I spent $78.88. And this was mainly, um, I bought a blow dryer and I got some braiding hair. So that's pretty much what the majority of this money was spent on. So um, very happy about that. Typically, I come in under budget for beauty most months. Now, shopping is a category that I definitely want to work on um, in quarter two. 
85 in January, 144 in February, and then 109 in March, giving us a grand total of $339.20 that I spent on general shopping. That's basically personal care items, you know, um, just kind of, you know, parking. I usually pay for my parking um, with my shopping money. Um, you know, just pretty much anything I get when I'm out and about um, comes out of this category. So $339.20. Again, I think both February and March, I came in over budget, unfortunately. So definitely gonna be working on this. Now, here is the category where I know y'all, I know. This is a category that I need to work on the most, and this is fun and entertainment. So um, I'm an extrovert. I like to go out. I like to see my friends a lot, you know. Um, but that does not mean I need to spend money every time I go do that. So in January, I spent 162. Um, I went to like a very fancy like tea dinner for one of my friends in that month. So that also contributed to that cost. In February, I did 133. And then of course in March, I did 394, but I got engaged. So we were on like a little mini vacation and that's where the majority of that money went was during that vacation for a grand total of $690.46. So, you know, um, I'm the type of person where I much rather spend money on experiences rather than, you know, material things. I don't think it's wrong one way or the other, but I definitely prefer to spend money on experiences. However, y'all, the fact that I spent the same, basically the same amount of money on groceries and fun is kind of a problem. So that is something I'm definitely gonna be working on in quarter two, especially as, you know, we plan a wedding and, um, you know, that's gonna be an expense. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be working on this category. Now the category I wanna put more money into is giving. I put 10 towards giving in January, none towards uh, giving in February at 50 in March towards uh, for a grand total of 60. So I definitely want to work on improving this and giving more money away. Eating out is a category that I'm relatively happy with. Um, in total for three months of eating out, I only spent $175.96. I've never been a big eat outer. I don't have DoorDash or anything really like that. We use it very rarely. So I'm actually very happy about this. Holidays, we didn't spend anything on holidays in quarter one. That includes Valentine's Day. <laughs> We're just not, you know, holiday people like that. So nothing on that. Gifts, I only spend money on gifts in January and that is because my mom and my fiance's birthday are both in January. So I spent uh, $98.61 on gifts. Car has been relatively low. Just a couple things for my car here and here air fresheners, things to get it cleaned. And I did get an oil change in March, um, bringing the total car for $59.91. Clothes, I did pretty good with clothes. I feel like um, I came in very, very, very close to my budget each month or just slightly over for a grand total of $204.07. And this is the other category that I'm probably gonna completely cut out for the rest of the year, unless I really, really need something. Because like, again, we gotta get fun from somewhere, right? So clothes and definitely fun so far on the chopping block. Electronics, spent nothing on that. And then house, I spent $152.96. Um, majority of the house spending I've done recently has come out of our tax return, which is not reflected in any of the values that I showed today. So like we bought a couch and like just did some general renovations around the house. And that was in almost entirely funded by the tax return. So, um, so yeah, so um, I didn't spend a lot on house, $152.96 total. Health, I only spent $138.92 and either prescriptions, co-pays, all that good stuff, so not too bad. Pet, which is just additional things for my dog Titan. I usually give him something every month. That was $30.50 for quarter one. Nutrafol, which are the hair vitamins that I take. I've spent $225.19. Yes, I know they are pricey, but they work. I notice a huge difference in my hair when I stopped taking them. And like, th they're worth the money. It's like one of those small luxuries that I refuse to give up. 
Um, so yeah, this will not be on the chopping block, but so far clothes and fun and maybe even shopping in house are definitely gonna be on the chopping block for spending for quarter two. And then additionally, I spent $201.89 out of my buffer in um, January. That was a veterinary bill for my dog. And then I had a couple of other small purchases in February and didn't spend anything out of it in March. So grand total, I spent in my discretionary expenses $3,044.60. So if we do $3,044 sorry, 3,440 and 66, divide that by our total of what we got paid, which is 15,167.80, means I um, spent about 20 uh, to 23% of my income on my um, uh, discretionary expenses. And then if I look at that on a percentage breakdown by each individual categories, yeah, this is a problem where I'm spending basically the same amount of money on groceries and fun. Um, so yeah, fun has got to, it's got to come down in quarter two, which is going to be tough because it's going to be warm outside and I'm going to want to be outside. But you know, something's got to get, maybe we can actually have a party at our house. I don't know. Um, and then clothes, health, a couple of other categories i got to reduce dramatically in quarter two. So next thing I wanna just show y'all is where my all of my accounts are, um, kind of where I started and where I ended. So just in my checking account, I had 1,150, 64 at the start of the year, I ended quarter one with $918.81. I'm fine with this. I usually keep my checking account around $1,000, so I'm fine with that. I had a net increase in my savings from 3,731.56 to 33,952.16, so happy about that. I had an increase in Robinhood, which is where I do my investing. Started the quarter with 2,978.89, um, ending the quarter with 3,698.91. My Roth IRA, I also um, had a, a percent uh, change uh, gain in my Roth IRA. Um, started with 15,955.77, ended with 18,534.90. And then in my traditional IRA, which I don't contribute to, I'm actually contributing all of my money to my Roth IRA. Um, I still had a gain, even though I hadn't contributed to it in a while. Started off with 15,376, 372.58, ended with $16,117.69. My 401k had a nice increase um, um, in quarter one. Started off with $17,887.74. Ended with 2,000, sorry, 23,000. 321.84 and then my I bond started off the year at 10,880 and ended quarter one at 10,972. So in total for my accounts, I started off the year with 95,957.15 and I ended quarter one with 107,516 $5 $5 $5 $5 $5 $5 $5 $5 $5 $5 so just giving a brief summary of all of my expenses, not including my general account. Income had 15,167.80, total expenses at 8,664.8 cents, and then savings at 5,299. Ooh, so I know that was a lot, but it was really nice for me to kind of just go through everything. And that way I can look back on this video at the end of quarter two and, you know, see how far I come. Uh, hopefully I've cut back on my fun. So future Brittany, if you watch this video, um, don't be mad at me if I did it, but anyways, I'm gonna hope that I cut down on fun and clothes and a couple other categories that I talked about today. 
um, so I can really um, start putting more money towards savings in this um, upcoming wedding. All right, y'all, that's gonna go ahead and end this video. If you did enjoy, please consider giving it a like, commenting, and subscribing. If you do these quarterly reviews, how did quarter one go for you? Did you stay within your financial goals? Do you have some areas that you wanna come back on like me? Um, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.